<coughs> How's it going, people? Well, I'm doing exceedingly well. I got a cord of wood and roaring fire going, and that's all I need up here on Mount Hope. I did buy myself an early Christmas present. Little uh, catcher on the rye. <laughs> Rock and rye, low and slow. Anyhow, I am looking forward to trying this out. I don't drink much rye, but uh, this was recommended to me. And, you know, I believe almost anything I'm told, so. Ah, it's cork. Classy. Mmm. Mmm. Sweet. It's very good, though. Alright. I have an important subject to bring up. It's the elephant in the room in every room. I, <clears throat> I recently had a somewhat heated discussion with some family members of mine on the subject. This subject. Mm-hmm. This was left on my car somewhat recently. I think somebody that I know was messing with me and they had it and because they checked off the checkbox in the no section. <laughs> I didn't do it, but I would have. Uh, anyway, we're going to see some, apparently, some powerful arguments about why God loves the unborn. They Maybe it even, I don't know, maybe they'll find something in the Bible. I, I, I've seen pretty much the opposite myself. All right, let's see how this uh, document starts out. <clears throat> I'm not ready yet. That helped. All right. The headline is, Abortion is Murder. So that's how they started off. So you can tell that there's some serious objective thinking going on, or objectionable thinking. <sighs> there's just, you know, case closed. There is no argument because they feel strongly about this. I... I understand. I think abortion is awful, you know, and I, I swear I will never personally have one. But I'm also not going to tell somebody what to do with their own body or what's in their body. Uh -uh. Every year, there are at least 1.5 million babies murdered before they have a chance to be born. That's right, all caps, BABIES! Exclamation point, all that. Not fetuses or parasites. BABIES! The Almighty God himself refers to the unborn as literal human beings in his own words. Here we go. Some evidence. Hang on. No time. Uh. All right. This, of course, has a, an ellipsis, you know, a, there's a lacunae where they have left parts out, probably for space. The babe, parenthesis, not parasite, leaped in her womb. Yeah, all right. And that's Luke 1, 41, and you will find it nowhere else. 
not in the other Gospels, not in any of the epistles of Paul or anybody else, or anywhere else, except maybe the Apocrypha. <clears throat> Refusing a helpless baby the right to be born is obviously murder. Powerful case they're making. And therefore, against God's will, according to his word, thou shalt not kill. Exodus 21.3 Alright, well, that, they've explained why abortion is murder without explaining anything. They're just telling us. I feel this way, and I insist that you do too. I say, if you can, don't have an abortion, all right? You know? We got technology. That, you know? But, I mean, these people don't even want you to take a morning after pill. You know? And I don't know. I mean, are condoms like uh, teasing a spermatozoa? It's like, oh, I don't have a chance. It's not fair. You didn't give that, that sperm a chance to hit the mark. You know, life just isn't fair, is it? Anyway, yeah, Onan got killed for that. That's right. The choice for life. Friend, did you know that God's holy word speaks about others who are unborn in a different kind of way? That's right. These have a choice of whether they want to be born or not. Or not? What, do they pull a ripcord and become a miscarriage? I mean, if abortion's murder, isn't it like a, I don't know, miscarriage? Just like, what, failure to launch? <laughs> Abort mission? All right. In the Gospel of St. John, we see Jesus explaining this to a very moral <clears throat> and religious man named Nicodemus. Interesting, interesting apocryphal book, too, by the way. Uh, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And that's according to John 3.3 3, and nowhere else. That's why they need four books to tell the same story because they're all different. And there's cool things in each one. And they didn't have the nerve to, nerve to just Frankenstein them, you know, and then pass them off as a damn Christmas card, you know? <sighs> Someday they will. Three, three. Nicodemus thought that Jesus was talking about a physical birth. <sighs> that reminds me. I think I'm going to need this. All right. <clears throat> Nicodemus. Huh? I think I know where they're going with this. I remember my Sunday school. <sighs> Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time? into his mother's womb and be born? Here's a sick fuck for even asking. John 3, 4. Jesus told Nicodemus that a man must have a second birth, a spiritual birth, to enter the kingdom of God. Except 
a man be born of water from the mother's womb and of the spirit from the word of God. That's John 6.63. We're just jumping all over the place here. And apparently, you can also find something very close to that in 1 Peter. 1, 2, 3. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. John 3, 5. Bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. But they're making a point. I hope. Notice that the word water in the context, in this context, is speaking of the phys physical birth and not the ceremony of baptism. Oh, really? It's that obvious, huh? Let's just say, I don't know one way or the other. So... But I've heard it said the other way, that that means you got to be dunked ceremonially. <clears throat> Jesus reaffirms this meaning in verse 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, physical birth. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit, <laughs> spiritual birth, intangibility. Why a second birth? <clears throat> Pardon me. Why? According to the Bible, God said to Adam, that wait, God said that Adam would die the very day that he ate the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Well, he didn't, and stopped calling him Shirley. <laughs> anyway, that's Genesis. I'm just putting up captions. Fuck it. <clears throat> Adam did not die a physical death that day. It was a spiritual death that passed upon all mankind. How obvious that it is now that you... No, it isn't. That's fucking crazy. All right, we're all talking Mother Goose here, but I'll indulge you. Mm. Uh. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. And that's Romans 5.12. Since you are a descendant from Adam. You know, that reminds me of a joke. <laughs> oh, never mind. Oh, what the fuck. It's dumb. But uh, you know why you can't trust an Adam? They make up everything. <laughs> All right, never mind. <laughs> that was lame, I know. Uh you have inherited that spiritual death and must be born again to have spiritual life. Oh, they didn't really even spend a second on abortion in that passage. They're talking about being born again. I'm waiting to be convinced that abortion is murder. I, according to the Bible. And that's a tough one. Because uh, I can point some shit out in the Bible. Yeah. But most people know about that. And you can probably find it on YouTube somewhere. I'll just probably stick some captions up. Real quickly. Hmm. <sighs> 
God loves the unborn. Let's continue Jesus' conversation with Nicodemus in verse, eight, uh, verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, oh yeah, I remember that story. <laughs> yeah, his other magic staff. <sighs> Even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That's quite a stretch, but okay. That whosoever believeth not get baptized, but believeth in him should not perish. You shouldn't. But have eternal life. That means you have to have been around from the very beginning, but I guess it, when we're talking about atoms that make up everything, I guess we were. <laughs> uh, sort of. Kind of. For God so loved the world, spirit, uh, spiritually unborn, that he gave his only begotten son to die on the cross. They're helping out. These verses aren't making it. They need a little building up. A little uh, editorial accretion. <sighs> that whosoever believeth in him, not about him, but in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. Not probationary life, but everlasting life. Sounds wonderful. Too good to be true. That's why you know it is. Listen. If you have never been born again, you are spiritually unborn. What if you've been born again several times? And tried other shit out too. Uh, <laughs> none of it worked. Because it's all hocus pocus. <laughs> One big grim fairy tale. <sighs> but a, we're going to get to abortion eventually, right? From the Bible. You can find things in the Bible that so far, they haven't had any anti-abortion Bible verses. Yet. Not, not really. <sighs> but God loves you and has made you, made for you, wait, has made a way for you to become his spiritual child. Yeah, it's too bad you can't see spiritual shit, you know, because then you'd know what you're getting, you know. Because it sounds like so much uh, ectoplasm and, uh, I don't know, <laughs> wishful thinking. <sighs> Friend, friendly guy writing this, or gal. Uh, according to God's holy word, you are a creature of God. Just not his kid. Not officially. Get with the program. <sighs> but you are not considered a child of God until you are born of the Spirit. Sorry. But it's still probably not hard to do. Just fall in with the fucking flock. You'll be fine. The only way that you can become a child of God is by putting your complete faith 
pardon me, in Jesus Christ to save your soul, which is also intangible, invisible. You just got to have faith to believe that you even have a soul to be saved. <laughs> if I have one, save it. Didn't Voltaire say something like that? <sighs> Saint Paul makes this very clear for a change. <laughs> When he wrote a letter to his spiritual brethren and sistren <laughs> in Gal uh, Galatia, for ye are the children of God by faith. In Jesus Christ. And that's Galatians 3.26. Think of it! <laughs> yeah, I have been quite for quite some time. <laughs> Only now I chuckle when I think about it. Uh, the very moment that you call on Jesus Christ with complete faith, complete faith, Faith. Wow. I'd love to meet that person and sell them a bridge. <laughs> but enough about Scientology. That's a different video for a different time. Complete faith in him to save your soul. That very moment you are birthed into the family of God. To be his child forever. And a whole lot less messy this way. <sighs> but intangible. Mostly imaginary. Or faith oriented. Uh, Wherefore. Thou art. No more a servant. But a son. <sighs> and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Galatians 4 7. Look it up. <sighs> That's all they've got. Abortion is murder because they said so. The Bible sure doesn't say so. Uh-uh. You can look them up. All right, and then what is your choice? And the reason why I think that someone was pranking me that I probably work with, because this was on my windshield wiper under it uh, in the underground garage at, near my work. Somebody that I know was fucking with me, and I appreciate it because they checked that box for me. Oh, that's nice. All right, let's read the, what your choices are. What is your choice? Box one. I choose to be born of the Spirit by completely trusting Jesus Christ to save my soul forever. <sighs> I do a quote. He that believeth in the Son hath everlasting life. John 3, 36. A, the first half of the verse, the applicable half, the useful half. Here's the no box that somebody checked for me. Somebody I know, I'm going to ask her around. No, I like the mystery better. All right. Uh, 
I am content with being born once and choose to remain spiritually unborn. I have a spiritual miscarriage because I've been born several times, but mostly breach. And <laughs> he, and that's a universal he, so you ladies are not off the hook. Because he means you too. If you're a human being, he means you. Sorry. That's just the... I'm just, you know, quoting, uh, according to Hoyle. Uh, <laughs> he that believeth not the Son shall not see the life. After this life, apparently. But the wrath of God abideth on him. That's some scary shit. Ah, John 3, 36b. The mystery is solved. Uh. You can tell I don't read ahead. I like to wing it. Uh, marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. John 3, 7. Still nothing about abortion. What the fuck? I am so disappointed. I would love to see something I can actually think about, consider, without chuckling. Anyhow, let me know if you learned something. Maybe I missed something. Um, stay tuned. I'll probably do something soon. Peace the fuck out. Have a wonderful whatever the fuck it is you're having. I'm doing just fine. Don't worry about me. I'm just hoping that you're all right.